Tasker can now connect your devices. Check it out. There's a new HTTP request event and a new HTTP re response action. What this means is you can receive requests in Tasker and then respond to those requests in, from Tasker as well. Let's see how it works. So how this works is you create a profile for each type of request you want to be able to respond to. For example, this is the very simple example called hello world. And in this request, I'm expecting to receive uh, a, met, a, get, a get request on this path, hello. And whenever I receive this, um, in this simple example, I simply send a response, hello world, in text. So this is the, the most simple way you can respond is simply setting the quick response here. In this case, setting it to hello world. So if I go to my PC here and I open this page with the path, hello, starting by the, the IP address and port that I've set up on my phone and the path, hello, It'll show the text, hello world. So this came from Tasker. And as you saw there, the ta uh, Tasker showed a flash with the text said, hello. Because in this profile, you have this action associated with this request. As a second example here, you can see how a, a bit more um, complete, uh, a bit more complete example where, where if the remote host is requesting the favicom.ico path, which is what happens when uh, pages load and try to get the icon here. As you can see my, on my PC on this top left, if you try to get this icon, then uh, this page is requested. And in this example, Tasker simply responds with the new HTTP response action with the file of an image of Tasker's icon. So in this case, you uh, get a request. And as you can see, it creates all of these variables. And one of them is the request ID. And then you use that request ID to respond to it using it here. And then you respond to it with whatever is appropriate. In this case, I respond with a file, which is in, in this path. So as you can see on my PC, the icon is correctly requested and put in the icon space there. And with this, you can do anything you want uh, because this is Tasker. So you can communicate back and forth and you can even do full pages like this. This is a page, as you can see, it's a, it has this path. And this is using the system file host, the file system host the pro, uh, profile that I've created here. If you, if you have a path that starts with file, as you can see here, it starts with file, and then you, you put anything else uh, in front of it, then you have this task that basically uh, parses the, the path, and then it, it uh, responds with the, the contents of the file. So in this case, the page, the, the file I'm requesting is pages home.html, which is a, a page that I've created for, to, uh, to, for this specific example to show, to show off a few of the features you can do with this. And so it responds with the file, and you can see the file here. It's a normal HTML file. And on this page, I've created a few basic examples so you can see how it works. For example, I have this command um, profile here. So if the request starts with the command path, and then the fl if the flash uh, request um, request parameter is set, then it'll, it'll do the flash. And if it's a say, it'll do this. And if it's a write, it'll do this. So in the page, I've implemented this in these buttons here. So if I click this, say hello as toast, it shows up right here. If I click say hello out loud on the phone. Hello everyone. I may just put this a bit a little bit louder. Hello everyone. As you can see, I'm sending out commands to Tasker from my PC. 
if I go to any input field and write some text, hi, I'm writing text from my PC. As you can see, it wrote the text right here. And you can even request files like images or videos from your phone. So these are two files that are currently on my phone. But if I want, I can replace either one of them with, for example, this file, submit. And now the page reloads with the new files. I haven't submit, submitted a video, so the video is blank. But the, the image I submitted now appears here. What this does is simply upload a file with this profile here. It uploads the files, puts them in the correct directory, and then when the page is reloaded, the files show up here. You can even open files on your device. For example, if I open this, the file opens on your device, as you can see. This is done with this profile. And then, for example, I could create a, uh, take a screenshot from my phone and make it appear on my PC. And here it is. And you can also select to download the screenshot instead, instead of simply showing it. That will take the screenshot, download it, and then you get a file on your PC like this. And how this works is you have a screenshot uh, profile with the screen uh, path here. And, and how this works is uh, if in the request you receive a download query parameter, you send a response as a file, but don't select the file inline option here. But if you don't get this download parameter, you enable this file inline, and so it won't download the file and simply show it on the page. You also have this variable profile here that simply allows you to get any variable from Tasker and display it on the page here on my PC. So for example, I have this last music app variable so if I write this here, you can see that the value corresponds to the one in Tasker. And how this works is you get a name request parameter, and then you recursively get the variable value by using this, uh, this technique here that's available in Tasker. By using double percentage, you get the name of the variable, and then you get the value of that name. You can also get the location by using this get location button here. And what this does, it opens up a page with the location path. And then I get my location and I simply get a response where I redirect the page to the URL that I get from this action, from this get location v2 action. And this simply reloads the page in the new correct URL. I won't uh, show this here, just so I don't reveal my location, but <laughs> believe me, it works. Then you can, you have this profile here to open an app by its name. So if I select, if I write Spotify here, it opens Spotify. And finally, in this, in this example page, you can see this media player here that I've quickly implement, implemented. And if you press play on the, on the PC, you can see that it started playing on the device. And it even updated the track name and the artist name and the album name from the playing track on the page. You can put the volume up. You can put the volume down. You can skip to the next song all on your PC and it will update in real time what the song pl uh, that is playing here. And how this works is a technique I used that, well, I came up with it, but you can use it any way you want it, which is there's a profile that monitors the current song. 
uh, first off, there's a on the page, you the page will keep uh, sending a, a request over and over again to this path right here, current song. And all this does is set a variable called song request ID to the request ID that I received from this request. And this, this will be set right here. So in this other profile, when the current song is changed, all it does, it's, it gets the song name and stuff, and then sends the response back with that song request ID a variable that I set before. So as you can see, you don't even have to respond in the same profile that you received the request on. In this case, I simply set a variable here, and, uh, and then I reply to that request in a different profile here. So as you can see, this is totally dynamic. You don't even have to chain these together. You can do receive the request in one place and then set the response in a different place. And this allows me to uh, keep the song here, the song name up to date because the page is always requesting it. And whenever um, the song changes here, it'll simply send the response back and um, the page will be waiting for that response. And then when it gets the response, it'll update it here. Then finally, I have this, uh, this file list here, which is a way to that you can use to browse all the files on your on your device. So in this case, you can see that I have a list of, of, of uh, files here in this, on this folder, but I can change the folder. For example, if I browse to the tasker folder, I can see the folders and files in the tasker folder. I can browse any file and I can even download the files themselves. So now you can very easily create a remote file browser for your device. Oh, and I almost forgot. You can even, um, if I do this and open the page on my phone here, you have a link here that simply I'll show you the link on my PC here. And it simply opens this URL. And what this does on the phone, it opens a secondary app. So you can use that as well. You can use a direct URL as a secondary app. So this is the example page I've created here. It has everything in Tasker. You can do whatever you like with this. This is totally dynamic. You can send requests between phones. You can send requests between your PC and phone in your phone. You can send JSON structures back and forth so you can control anything you like. So now it's up to you. I hope you enjoyed all this brief demo. Well, it was not that brief, but okay. So this has been a, a pretty long demo actually, but I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.